Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 15th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see BC, Washington, and Oregon. Check out our system here moving across the Pacific Northwest. It's going to kick up some winds. It's going to bring some showery activity, maybe a little bit of mountain snows here. We'll take a look at those details. You can also see the next ridge that's building out here. So it's really going to build way up towards Alaska and some of the Yukon and Northwest Territories up here. And we're going to see what kind of effect that's going to have on us as we go through the upcoming week and towards next weekend here starting to get a little bit of some squirrely uh, results coming out here as far as the potential for some warmer weather next weekend here so we'll take a look at that as we go through the video here today you can see if i back this up let me go ahead and just make sure we have the lightning strikes selected on here and as i scroll through yesterday you'll notice that we this is ongoing during the morning across a lot of southern oregon here and it continued on for much of the day and it extended back towards the blue mountains some of idaho and western montana as well and you can kind of see that went on towards the nighttime hours is also and then we're probably going to do something similar again here today across portions of montana and eastern idaho and then we've got this now system moving in here it's bringing some clouds into western washington and oregon had a little bit of lenticular cloud activity yesterday you can see some cold air cumulus behind this but this is not a big precipitation maker for some of the lower elevations maybe a tenth of an inch or two for some select locations and maybe some enhancement with the convergence zone activity across some of the central cascades so just a reminder here that you can still sign up for this online course here, Skywarn Spotter Trainings here. So they're going to do some additional trainings in the fall. But heads up, if you want to do that, go ahead and check out their website, uh, National Weather Service Seattle Graphic here. And taking a look at the cold mornings, freezing temperatures, check it out. Look at places like Walla Walla and Yak might get, might get some frosty mornings coming in here. Big time uh, temperature drop coming in with this system. And you can see Tollgate, look at that. Temperatures down into the 20s, maybe Redmond as well, Joseph. So yeah, heads up for that. Definitely going to feel the chill in the air if you don't already this morning. And here we got some peak wind gusts forecast through Monday. And again, just outside of Ellensburg, I-90 Highway 2, some gusty winds out there. Strongest winds this afternoon could even kick off some grass fires so be careful with that now this is the thunderstorm outlook just want to kind of show you this is now across montana and portions of eastern idaho not expecting it today across um, washington and oregon i mean it's not completely out of the question we are gonna have some convergence on activities we go through the day today and maybe again tomorrow but a very low chance and if you want a nice affordable home weather station, click on that link down below to save 10% off. This also has a lightning detection system. Speaking of lightning, it's got an ultrasonic anemometer, so also the data for you in the cloud. Highly recommended. And I have a lot of people ask about this. This is my YouTube channel here, just watching one of the random videos. And you can see if you want to buy some of the gear, you just go ahead and click down here. And on the smartphone, I think it's just below the comment section here. So you can click on that and it brings you to spread shop there. And if you have any design ideas, let me know. So now taking a look at 15, uh, 18,000 feet, 500 millibars here, and you got the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. You can see British Columbia and Washington. This is the system kicking up the winds today in the convergent zone activity and really cooling us down. And the GFS, you know, pretty good model agreement in the short term. And as we continue through the next few days, you'll see that big ridge build way up across southeast Alaska up towards the Yukon here. And as we do that, this low kind of hangs out or this troughing kind of hangs out across central portion of the country for a couple days. So we build this ridge as we go towards the end of the week but you'll clearly see this next system start to come in here and you see the gfs a little bit more robust with it so that could throw a fly in the ointment here as far as having a warm weekend coming up so that's something we have to watch over the next few days you see the european and not as strong with that system and kind of tries to build the ridge in much quicker on the back side of that so we'll see how that goes over the next couple of days we'll check that again tomorrow now looking at the wind speeds here this is the north american model you can see the strong westerlies coming down this is some of the strait of Juana fuca through the shihela scap going to be some convergent zone activity where those winds meet right across the central puget sound and you can see these winds kicking up here east of the cascades of washington oregon get some blowing dust out there and you know watch out for the fire conditions as well well, as they mentioned and as we go through Tuesday kind of still keeping them elevated all the way through Wednesday afternoon when or Tuesday afternoon Tuesday evening and then finally starting to relax as we go on in towards Wednesday afternoon some strong northerly is kind of showing up there on uh, the North American model for some of the Willamette Valley as we go through Wednesday afternoon also 
But now looking at the parent temperature, check it out as I scroll through the day today. What a big change from yesterday. I mean, nice warm temperatures, upper 60s across a lot of Puget Sound. Nice sunshine out there. For those of you that weren't dealing with the thunderstorm activity, you know, not too bad here for eastern Washington, but the winds are going to be kicking up. But look at some of these temperatures we got this afternoon. It's going to feel like the low to mid 40s for a lot of the areas here. So definitely a big change coming in. And as we go through the day tomorrow as well, not much, maybe a little bit, a bit of a bounce back here, but definitely cooler east portions and then as we go on in through Wednesday we start to bounce back a little bit more and then we're probably going to warm up a bit here as we go towards the end of the week more on that here in a moment and look at the European I, I tried to see if there was any kind of lightning flash density potential showing up for today not nothing showed up for today a little bit showed up for tomorrow so we'll watch that again tomorrow also and see if we do have a thunderstorm chance across from the southwest BC here and maybe western Washington we'll see how that goes uh, 700 millibars, I like to show what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This is 10,000 feet, and you can clearly see what is cooling us off here. And it's got a fairly decent gradient, and that's why it's kicking off some of these winds. And then this will start to kick out of here, and we're going to start to build a ridge as we go through the end of the week, like I mentioned. Now, looking at total snow, you'll notice a little bit of snowfall across British Columbia and the Olympic Mountains, some of the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, but kind of highlighted here across the Central Cascades where you're going to get that convergent zone activity through the Chehalis Gap, through the Strait of Juan de Fuca, kind of meeting in the Central Cascades there. So, you know, watch out if you're out hiking or camping out and about across some of the areas between, you know, Snoqualmie Pass out there. You know, watch out Stevens Pass. There's a lot of hiking areas in this time of year. People start to get out in the backcountry there. So be uh, wary of that as we go on in through the day today and tonight to tomorrow morning. Uh, looking at total precipitation in inches, and you can kind of see how this thing is just moisture start maybe in a tenth of an inch here in the convergence under the Snohomish King County line, and a few hundredths of an inch maybe a few other places here, but kind of highlighted in the Cascades for the most part. Now, taking a look at daily two meter max temperature, we're going to scroll through day by day. This is Monday today. You can see maybe lower 50s, a little bit warmer for the Willamette Valley. And by tomorrow, we really cool down eastern Washington fully. And that's Tuesday, 55, 58 maybe for Portland here. And then as we go on in through Wednesday, we start to bounce back a bit. Thursday a bit warmer. Friday might be the warmest day here, depending again on what that system does as we go through the end of the week towards this weekend. But check it out. Some 70s starting to show back up here for Western Oregon and some upper 60s again. Pretty nice day there. But then that system tries to move through and maybe drops it back down. We'll see how that goes. Um, we're going to wait another day or two before we really get into the details of that next system here. Now taking a look at the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. This goes through April 24th. Still have that above average here as we go through the next 6 to 10 days. And as we go to 6 to 10 day precipitation, get that below average signal here across much of the west. 8 to 14 day kind of does include the Pacific Northwest here as we go towards the end of the month. And this is the 8 to 14 day precipitation here. So again, take that with a grain of salt at this range. And this is the average temperature departure. Uh, this is from the water year when it started October 1st here. So you can see much of Oregon has been above average and a couple areas have been below here for, for the most part. Much of Oregon has been above average during this time frame, kind of to be expected during an El Nino year. Same thing for Washington, very few areas below average and some areas quite a bit above average. And there's a percent of average precipitation since the water year started. And you can see some of the Puget Sound here, including some of the Seattle Metro, Tacoma, you know, federal way down there, between 50 and 70 percent. Some of the Cascades well below normal also. And this is Oregon, actually a little bit of a flip from Washington. Much of the state has been above average. And this out here across some of the southeast doesn't get as much precipitation, so it doesn't take too much to skew some of these numbers here. But Western Oregon is still doing pretty well during this water year. Um, but yeah, anyway, Hope you guys are enjoying uh, the cool down here today. It was quite a nice day yesterday, and I can't wait for more days like that here upcoming. You know, the long winters here in the Pacific Northwest, so you, you definitely cherish these great days that come by like this. And we're kind of going back and forth, pretty typical for springtime here. But we'll see what this ridge does out here and see what that next system is going to do as we go towards the end of the week. Hope you guys are having a good day. We'll do this again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.